So one of the first things you want to do when you're setting up teams for your um, education institutes is to make sure that you've got the policies in place uh, to control what people can do and what people can see. And that's not just for students, but for staff as well. So I'm going to go through some of those policies that you'll want to set up uh, before you release it to staff and students, or if you haven't already done so, maybe go back and make some changes to them. So there's a number of different policies in the Teams Admin Center. So I'm logged into the Teams Admin Center. You can do that by going to uh, the Admin Center. And on the left-hand side, you'll find the Teams Admin Center, which will take you here. So one of those is going to be uh, the meeting policies. So um, we'll look at that one first. We'll just go to sort of top to bottom. Um, and these are the policies about what people can do inside those meetings. Now you'll see that there's an all students and all teachers meeting policy in here but it won't be applied to anybody. Uh, the only one that is applied to everybody is a global one. And this is the one that overrides everything. So if I allow transcription here, it'll mean in my other policies, I can also allow that as well. And this will apply to everybody who doesn't have a policy. So if we go back and we make a brand new one, so I'll just start off making a brand new one. You could use these and then apply them. So I'll call this my, uh, my student policy and you've got a number of options on here and you need to think about what is good for your school and um, if you need to turn off anything for safeguarding issues maybe go through this with somebody um, who represents safeguarding in school and you can turn on and off the different options so if you wanted to uh, not allow uh, video uh, in those meetings you can turn that off and just apply that for students only so you can make those choices and you'll be able to go through all these different options and turn stuff on and off um, to allow them you know if I wanted to not let them chat in meetings I could do that that probably wouldn't be great but if you really needed to you could do and you can even set a policy for maybe some of the students that um, need to be restricted a bit more so you could give them different policies to different students if you really wanted to so I'm going to make a generic student one. Um, imagine I've uh, filled these out and made my choices. And once I've saved that, you'll, you'll have to remember that this policy hasn't been applied to anybody yet. And the way we can do that now, it used to be just through PowerShell, which you can have a look at our other blog post, how you can apply it via PowerShell. Um, but we can actually do that now using the group policy assignment. So I can go to add a group. I can search for that group. So I've got a group for um, all students and, and I, can, I can apply this policy. So I can choose that new student policy and I can click apply. And that's now applied it to everybody within that group. The next one down is the live meetings policies. So this is if you do some uh, live events so um, if you decide to hold some live events, maybe it's a school assembly, maybe a parents evening that you're going to do a talk at the beginning where you want everyone to watch, but you don't necessarily want people to chat and have conversations in those. Then live events is great for those large groups of people who are watching a webinar. So again, you can create your policies in here. There's not as many options in here because uh, live events are quite restrictive anyway. Um, and again, I can make those changes. I can, um, to the global one I can create my own one using the add button and I can go to the group policy assignment to assign that policy to a group we've then got the messaging policies this is a big one so this is one you'll definitely want to have a look at and again there's some student ones in here that you can populate now one thing to think about when you think about the messaging policies is when teachers are in their teams they really need to be able to delete uh, messages that students put on there so owners can delete sent messages is one that you'll definitely want to enable for teachers and you want to apply that to your teacher group so if anybody if they need to remove any messages for safeguarding reasons they can do that because out of the box they can't do that and again there's a number of different other options on here that you know you can decide if you want students to be able to use memes or stickers you might want to restrict some of that um, or maybe just allow it for teachers and again once you've saved those policies we then go to the group policy assignment add a group and we can assign that so if it was a teacher policy 
I can select my all teacher group and I, and, I, and I can assign that faculty policy that I've just created and apply it to that group. I just discard that. Um, so there's a number of other policies that uh, you'll find on here as well. So there's things like permission policies. And again, you're not always going to want to create all of these, but when it comes to things like installing custom apps, maybe that is something you want to restrict just to teachers or maybe restrict it altogether. Your voice policies. So this is probably going to be more appropriate to you if you're using Teams as a calling system in terms of, you know, phone system. Um, and this allows people to do things like park calls and um, it'll, it'll be things like answer machines as well. So I can forward things to voicemail, etc. So again, still might be useful even if you're not using Git as a complete phone system. There's still some of these which will be really useful. So still worth going through those policies, caller ID policies as well there. And I think that's uh, I think that's about it. Um, so you've got all those different policies you're going to want to go through. Sit down with somebody, make sure you've got the right ones. But then don't forget you do need to apply that policy afterwards, either through PowerShell using the blog post we've provided or just using that new group policy feature, which you might see isn't available on all of them yet. Um, we can see it's not available on this uh, caller ID policy. You'll still have to set those via PowerShell.